Well, <clears throat> good evening, everybody. <clears throat> At least it is evening here in Finland in our a uh, little temple of silence, and we are preparing for our work at the time of the Cancer full moon. So this is the pre-full moon with its uh, particular astrological emphasis, and I'd I certainly like to thank all you who have shown up and who are uh, meditating uh, with us. And also last night, uh, a number of people joined us for the uh, solar cancer solar fire ritual oratorio meditation um, with the music and uh, I appreciate your presence um, <clears throat> now tomorrow well actually it's on the early morning GMT of the 28th so it's not exactly tomorrow here but 28th is uh, a Thursday so we begin at 3 30 a.m. GMT, you know, GMT never changes, you know that. And the actual uh, <clears throat> full moon is at 4.52.52, 4 o'clock and 52 minutes and 52 seconds. That's uh, about as exact as we can get it with the Swiss ephemeris. And uh, in Finland here, it's three hours later. So just adjust your time to the GMT that never changes. Your... Um, the time for you may never change too. Like if you live in Arizona, it just doesn't change. It's always seven hours from GMT. But if you go into summertime, you know, you're an hour closer and then standard time, you're an hour farther back from summertime. So we hope to uh, see you there. And just a word of caution, um, we're going, it's going to be a broadcast and it is necessary to use the comprehensive link, because there was an error made uh, in the uh, Cancer uh, Full Moon link, and it turned out to be a double Gemini, you know? Well, that fits. So Gemini was Gemini, and Cancer was Gemini too. Anyway, uh, use the comprehensive link, and maybe, I don't know, maybe uh, Joe or BL can help uh, <clears throat> us get that into the chat box in case well you should have it of course so now we uh we begin our uh, meditation at this point uh when the form nature in a way is in its ascendancy especially if we uh, look at the moon as the ruler of cancer which at first we do but the real ruler of course is neptune and Neptune uh, is a sacred planet, uh, maybe in this solar system, the most important uh, of the synthesizing planets, because it has the second ray monad in this second ray solar system. And in our next solar system, it'll be Uranus. But uh, I think Neptune is extremely important uh, for getting into the theme of our solar system with its second ray soul and second ray personality. Uh, and uh, on our little planet, uh, we also have a second ray soul and a difficult third ray personality. It's hard to bring these uh, qualities together, especially, um, you know, it represents the sort of soul and personality of uh, humanity uh, in general. There's a struggle between these two rays they are difficult uh, to to reconcile. But if you look at the sign Cancer, it is the uh, distributor of the third ray and also of the seventh ray. Uh, but its ruler, Neptune, brings in the 246 line very strongly. And so the Christ aspect, the great sensitivity, the sense of identification and wholeness is there. And we see... Uh, that wonderful mantra, the whole is seen as one. So practice that during these days, uh, regardless of the diversity which meets your perception, practice uh, registering wholeness, sameness, uh, homogeneity, the uh, fact that all things are really in unity together, regardless of how diverse they seem. Here is uh, our banner, you know, uh, with the moon as the orthodox ruler. And uh, 
Neptune is twice found, once as the esoteric ruler for people who are beginning to tread the spiritual path and in fact are making progress on the path of probationary initiation. And then there's also <clears throat> uh, Neptune for the initiates where they really have begun to identify uh, as love, as being, and there are no longer boundaries between uh, themselves and others. The Christ, of course, perfected this. He was, uh, for all practical purposes, the master of identification, and his uh, statement on identification uh, is the foremost, we are told, by uh, Master D.K. So uh, cancer is many, many different things, all the way from a very concrete uh, form which embodies uh, the spirit and the soul and uh, can be the prison house of the spirit and the soul as well, uh, all the way to this great uh, all-embracing oneness, uh, which is appreciated simultaneously regardless of the diversity. The whole is seen as one. Um, so, you know, re repeat that to yourself these days when the energy is coming in and when the opportunity to realize the nature of the mantram of the month, uh, there are several really, uh, is more with us than at other times. Uh, I, I was um, there as uh, Tuya was doing the broad, uh, broadcast for the ingress of cancer, and within a couple of minutes, I began to feel more acutely this wholeness of everything and the uh, interrelatedness of all diversity in this homogeneous wholeness. So, you know, that's identification. And at a certain point, even though we are on the path of probationary initiation, we have to begin to work with this wholeness. When you look at the Jafra um, illustration, we certainly see the moon up there, not so much Neptune, although the water is definitely there. It is a water sign and uh, closely associated, therefore, with the feelings and emotions and sensitivity. The hands are somehow... A, tremendously indicated and of course um, there are the giving hands you know and then there uh, you know the, the crucifixion uh, guarantees you know quite an unpleasant way of going about it I suppose but it's called the empty nail marked hands which allow one to uh, radiate and not grasp for oneself but I think you can see here that the grasping nature of uh, cancer is somehow emphasized, even with the two huge pincers or claws of the crab, which is reaching for form, which the moon represents. Now, we do have um, one of the, you know, sort of virgin goddesses of the hunt, Artemis or Diana here. Uh, we we have Diana, especially, I think, associated with the moon. Um, and this uh, tells us that we will go mad unless we purify our lunar nature. So uh, she is a chaste goddess, and we have to become in our lunar nature also spiritually chaste. We have to be as pure as possible so that our spiritual nature, our, our personality nature can truly reflect the spiritual nature without distortion. Otherwise, uh, we suffer uh, through the agitation of the lunar vehicles and uh, they block the higher spiritual energies. And so we cannot proceed. So the necessity for purification is very strong. Also, the old uh, Buddhist proverb, you know, let go. You know, when it comes to enlightenment, how do we achieve it? Well, we learn to let go of the lower 18 subplanes. We no longer grasp for the phenomenal world, 
which is the dense physical body of our planetary logos. We are looking for something higher. We want to enter the ethers of that great being and of the <clears throat> and of the solar logos, and we no longer want to be uh, captivated by the world of effects, by the world of the form, which is the essence of materialism and misleads people uh, so grievously. So, you know, there is the, um, the outer form, which is hard and crystalline, and we see that in the, in the, in the uh, shell of the crab and the turtle shell and all of that, but there's the inner sensitive being, which relates more to the feeling nature and to Neptune rather than the moon. So uh, Cancer's rulers are the moon and Neptune, when we get into other uh, constellations ruled by the moon, we have Virgo, we have Aquarius, uh, and they represent um, greater types of development of other aspects of the nature. But this is the irrational part of man, in a way, that we're dealing with here, and also with the super-rational part of man, the intuitive level, the buddhic plane, and that which reveals uh, the truth uh, through the intuition rather than through the reasoning power. It is said that Neptune, uh, Blavatsky says this, Neptune is the god of reasoning. Okay, but uh, what she is really pointing there is pure reason. Neptune is a buddhic planet in many ways and is the god of pure reason, not just an astral planet. Now, you know, Francis, as usual, has uh, drawn some beautiful things. Uh, probably uh, they are um, on the Makara website, and maybe they're also on the uh, website uh, here. Um, uh, yes, Makara and also Moria Federation. I believe, BL, that that is the case, that all of these images are there. Is that correct? Yes, um, yes, uh, it is. I'll put, I'll put the, they're under the esoteric astrology tab. Okay. Uh, and I'll put it in the, um, I'll put it in the chat. Okay, fantastic. So basically, you can go there for a fuller explanation than the one I may be able to uh, give here right now. But uh, he has two particular images. Uh, they both involve a temple. So take a good look at this one. This is the earlier image with six pillars and the Pleiades uh, above um, and uh, the scarab uh, rising here I suppose if we were to take a close look at this it's very interesting I wonder if I can if I wonder if I can do this uh, let's see yes take a look if you really look at this this is the beetle and it's uh, rising toward the heart center it's an old Egyptian symbol of uh, great importance so from a distance, it doesn't look uh, quite the way it is from up front. Let's take a look closer, you see. And so he'll, he'll describe uh, a little bit of this. Maybe I'll just leave it that way for the moment and go on to uh, say what he, has, um, what he has said here. Ba -ba -ba. Oh, goodness. Yes, okay. So... Here's the text, and uh, uh, in the ages long past, a being emerged from the ocean of life, passed through the wide Cancerian gate, you know. Um, I entered through the gate, uh, the, the gate that leads basically to death of consciousness in the form. It's not like the Capricornian gate. And thus, uh, at some point, entered that temple known as humanity. It's a form, you know, and all temples eventually must be destroyed uh, after they have uh, served their purpose. For aeons, the moon shone through that gate, strengthening its threefold form. It takes a long time to build the form, and the petals of the egoic lotus, the earlier ones, uh, are dedicated to that. After an endless tide of lives, maybe thousands, the moon begins to wane. Uh, revealing a truer source shining through its dissipating veils. It's the unveiled Neptune, which DK said was a bit of a danger for us if we're not ready for it because it could easily overwhelm us. 
Neptune waxed in strength, the astral trials began, because Neptune is an astral planet, as well as a buddhic planet, as well as a monadic planet. And um, then uh, the astral trials began, and the scarab, symbolizing the soul immersed in form, unfurled its wings and began its upward migration. So here we kind of look at that. The scarab begins from its upward migration from the lower centers to the higher centers. Okay. Now, uh, blah, blah, blah. let's see. Upward migration. Now, seeing the gate that leads into the spiritual kingdom, our disciple chants aloud, I build a lighted house and there indwell. There are a number of lighted houses. Uh, our whole personality can become a lighted house. And when you look at our... Uh, causal body. It uh, can be and is increasingly a lighted house. And finally, the greatest of the lighted houses is probably the Temple of Ezekiel, the monadic temple. Well, we're not into building that so much right now, but we certainly are into building the lighted house of the causal body. So two lighted houses are underway. The temple as a whole represents incarnation into physical form. You know, there's the tabernacle in the wilderness, and then there's the Solomon's, that's the personality, Solomon's temple that stands uh, for the, uh, the soul, uh, the infusion of the solar angel into the matter of the higher mental plane, and then the great temple of Ezekiel, which is the monad, and all of them eventually, after serving their purpose, uh, prove to be limitations and have to be destroyed. The six indigo pillars stand for the six ray energy of Neptune. It's a 246 planet and probably its soul ray is very much uh, the six, sixth ray. And let's see, I wonder how I can do this to make it easy. Okay, and uh, the gold bases of the, of the uh, pillars uh, and the capitals represent the fourth ray of harmony through conflict which uh, rules cancer through the moon. There may be an invisible planet, invisible to us, which carries the fourth ray at this time, a non-sacred planet. It's not the moon, but it's something that the moon veils. So there are three steps uh, they, uh, in this temple. They stand for the physical, astral, and mental bodies. Obviously, the progression as we learn to master one after another. The disciple uh, sitting at the level of the lower mental plane focuses on that which comes through. Okay, so there is the altar, which represents the higher mind. Okay. Okay. And um, having passed through the astral trials, its mirrored surface reflects the focus of the buddhic plane down into the now calm waters of the astral body. Uh, the, the astral body calms down considerably when the second initiation is taken and uh, the love, wisdom, energy enters the astral body via Venus, via Neptune, etc. Uh, the spaces between the pillars are the gates <clears throat> and they grant passage into the temple of water and earth along three uh, axes. Um, and so there's there's more to look at here, uh, and you can study this. Um, th there's an interesting statement here about these uh, so-called negative signs. They're not fire or air. Uh, the relationship brought about by the esoteric linking of Cancer, Virgo, Scorpio, Capricorn, Pisces. Um, in the future horoscopes of disciples, this significant interplay of forces will be recognized as dominating the chart at a particular and peculiar stage of discipleship. The moon is involved in all of them in a certain way. In Cancer, it is the exoteric ruler, uh, very outer. In Virgo, it represents particularly the purification of the form. In Scorpio, the moon falls. Okay. The moon falls into... Uh, uh, away from its power and is overcome. In Capricorn, the sign of initiation, the moon is in its detriment, and in Pisces, uh, I would say that the moon reflects the oneness of identification. Um, so the, the Pleiades are up in the upper dome, and that's called the eye of the mother, and illuminates the point around which our local universe revolves. What is our local universe? It's the seven solar systems of which ours is one. 
So the true mother of the form really is not the moon, it's the Pleiades altogether. And the scarab that I showed you there, uh, which is the ascending winged beetle, it means only begotten. And it stands, therefore, for birth into incarnation or in relation to the aspirant for the new birth. And uh, Francis gives us the reference, etc. Um, okay. Well, anyway, uh, this is to be studied, and you can do that. Um, you can do that in our Moria Federation and uh, uh, the Esoteric Astrology place. And uh, Francis has other um, webinars that he's been giving on very esoteric and important subjects. Now, we go a little further, and we see the larger temple in the three aspects of man, the outer personality, the inner soul, and something within, which is the true spirit. It really sparkles. It's very beautiful. And the 12 pillars are found there representing the 12 signs of the zodiac. Um, taking a look at this, it's the ancient Cancerian portal that leads into human incarnation. I enter into uh, life, uh, the gate into life for those who must know death, the death of the more expanded consciousness. But, of course, cancer also holds out the possibility that there will be a more uh, beautiful uh, realization. I'll get that picture out of the way so I can take a look here. Uh, Capricorn opens the realm into the fifth kingdom, and I, I enter through the gate. Uh, the gate that leads to uh, life. So the soul stands at the center. It is the central factor. And by emulating the open-handed gesture, you know, as you see probably here, the open-handed gesture, the personality uh, uh, depicted in the foreground has begun to take on the quality of the soul. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, um, study this, go on to the website and study this. Um, it, it, you know, it's, it's a very deep chapter. All of the, all of the cardinal signs are deep, and they, um, they represent the, the cross on which the great beings are crucified. Um, so they're, they're very mysterious, you know, uh, we have a cancer representing incarnation and uh, Libra legislation and Capricorn initiation. And I suppose uh, Aries represents creation. So these have to do with large groupings of monads. Um, okay, so the Christ uh, and the water of life, both Neptune and the Christ, we are told, preside over the second initiation, and that is the initiation before so many of the aspirants today. In DK's groups, uh, the second initiation was offered to a number of them, whether in the particular life or the life following of the life following, but it was imminent. Okay, and this is a water sign, and uh, the baptism is... Uh, the purification that we all have to have in order to enter the stream and be borne along by the current of the ashram. So uh, the initiate is uh, affected by the waters of life. He brings light to the world, and he anchors the influence of the soul on the physical plane through his purification. Okay, so, and we're going from water to fire. So do... Uh, Study this. The unveiled Neptune is capable of releasing the initiate from the thrall of astral glamour. The unveiled Neptune, says the Tibetan, relates cancer to no other constellation or sign except for the veiled ones. For when a man is an initiate, he does not react to ordinary feeling, sentiment, one of the things that has to be eliminated before we can fulfill rule 11, which has to do with the uh, fourth initiation of a group. Uh, so uh, he does not react to ordinary feeling, sentiment, or to 
personality relations as they express themselves in pleasure and pain. He's transcended all that. All these are surmounted. And eventually the watery life of emotional reaction, uh, which is so troublesome to so many of us for so many years, is superseded by the life of true and inclusive love. Now, Neptune is all about raising the energy from the solar plexus to the heart and up to the Ajna center eventually because that vision is conferred and then to the heart in the head. So the mother gives birth to the son and that individual spiritual entity then stands free. Neptune has so much to do with freeing us. Now it also captivates us to illusion and we become lost and kind of blind in the beginning and we wander without clarity, but eventually Neptune is that which releases us from the cosmic physical plane onto the cosmic astral plane. And the very first hierarchy that you're going to find there is ruled by the sign Cancer. So Cancer from being a very concrete and uh, encapsulated energy opens up wider and wider and wider until we actually get into the true ocean of love. The true ocean of love, which is the cosmic astral plane and you can study more specifically uh if you uh take what francis has said here and uh it's, it's just very somehow very uh, beautiful and it shows the three levels of man and how they achieve their transcendence now notice here uh it just implies that it tells you a little bit about it what we have is the esoteric rulers on these, I think they're called lintels, something like that. And uh, this would be the Scorpio gate and Mars is the esoteric ruler. This is the Capricorn gate through which the um, entombed Cancerian subject has to learn to pass. It's ruled by Saturn esoterically. This must be the Piscean gate, which is ruled esoterically by Pluto. And every one of these uh, has the uh, esoteric rulers. Now, what we all have to learn to do is to uh, live according to the esoteric rulers. So it doesn't do any good to use the esoteric rulers with the non-aspiring individual. But people like ourselves, you know, we're waking up to something here, and we begin to uh, aspire towards the spiritual life, and the esoteric rulers enter. Now, the big thing that's going on at every full moon is basically you're building your causal body, one of your lighted houses. Every time you repeat your concentration on one of the signs and its various planets and the rays associated, you are building a quality into your causal body, which eventually will be full and ready to transfer into the higher aspects of your nature. And, you know, we will truly enter the spiritual kingdom one day as a master through that process. So as we repeat our work month after month after month, what we're really doing is building our Temple of Solomon. We're building this uh, Augades, this higher nature, our truer nature filled with beautiful quality of color and radiance and sound, our, our truer identity, not our ultimate identity, which is more like the monad, but our truer identity. So it's very important to meditate uh, every uh, full moon at precisely the moment of the full moon, because then the door opens, as we have been told. Okay, so then do go to uh, Moria Federation website, uh, where under Esoteric Astrology, uh, as BL has told us here, we will find the... Um, the material that Francis has written, and he continues to uh, illuminate such things. He's working on The Secret Doctor now, and some of you have attended his monthly uh, webinars on The Secret Doctor. It's going to go on a long time. It's a big book, you know, so uh, years, I suspect. And then do uh, participate, learn more and more, because this is the time of assimilation. Seven years now, that's it. Seven years until 2025, until the Great Conclave, the gathering of the hierarchy to look ahead, to assess what has happened, to look ahead and 
the beginning of the new installment to be offered by Master DK, depending on how successfully we have assimilated what he's already given. All right, that'll get us started. So uh, a lot of you have come in, and I just want to uh, welcome you. I'm not going to go through, you know, all the names, but here we are, and now we begin our meditative uh, meditative work. And uh, there we are. Okay. So we are here uh, in this day of uh, aspiration, and the day of dedication comes uh, tomorrow, and then... Uh, in the early morning uh, at 4.52.52 uh, is the exact full moon in Cancer. I build the lighted house and there in dwell. And humanity itself, as we know, must become a lighted house. It's far from that now. Lots of glamour floating around. But uh, we are doing our best through the uh, ASK program to help with the dissipation of glamour and to work uh, with the triangles, which uh, is a work which must go on. These are broadcast, as you know, every week that we can possibly do it, starting Wednesday and lasting until Sunday, and uh, the reappearance of the Christ uh, meditations, the dependence meditations, essentially. So do do your best to join us. I know it takes a lot of uh, commitment, you know, but uh, do your best. and. Uh, we're meditating uh, on these things, and if the group meditates together, all right, more powerful, more powerful. Okay, so then will come the day of the full moon itself, maybe 12 hours before the exact full moon. So maybe at uh, 4.52 or so on the day before, GMT, will come the day of safeguarding and 12 hours afterwards, and at least with regard to his own group. Master DK was on the lookout for their esoteric approach, not only as individuals, but together as a group, and uh, welcomed them and uh, uh, sent the energy which would help to uplift. And then comes our distribution in your own way, uh, taking what you have received, and in your words and in your thoughts, uh, try to stay in that energy and... Uh, uh, express the energy of the lighted house, the energy of wholeness, the energy of integration. Cancer is one of the great signs of integration. So pulling everything together as a wholeness, so even in the personality, the uh, wholeness of the personality is seen as one, and all the different parts of it are finally brought together into a necessary unity. Alrighty, then let's go on <clears throat> so we will tune in with each other just a little silence wherever we may be geographically it doesn't make any difference it's one field of consciousness And it's not so much that we are personalities, but we're on the soul plane together, on the soul plane. The higher mind, plane of the higher mind. And we're in the soul field together, and you should begin to feel this togetherness, this unity, maybe something, some energy appears at the top of your head. You know it's not necessary, but it's one of the indications. So, we are the, in one way, the soul in incarnation. We recognize that. We're the extension of consciousness within the personality field. 
We are not the personality, per se. It's our instrument. We're something else, and we even withdraw out of that personality field, away from preoccupation with the button body, uh, with feelings and emotions, away from preoccupation with lower thoughts or concrete thoughts. And actually, we begin to imagine ourselves on the soul plane, within the field of light, love, and spiritual power. As it were, in the presence of the angel of the presence. So, we carry that with us all the time. and merge ourselves within that deep sense, not only of the apparently individual soul, but of the group soul. This consciousness we all share, and we reach out in soul to the spiritually minded people in the world. Uh, let's just say the men and women of goodwill. As if we can find them in soul. and especially to the new group of world servers, the brighter points of light scattered here and there throughout the world, reaching out in soul, unifying and supporting these people who are bringing the light, And our sense of unity and soul is increasing. In fact, it really reaches all human beings, whether in the body or out of the body, in their soul nature, at least in our imagination. And we get this sense that it is true, the great second ray mantram, not is, but me. There is no my soul or thy soul. Ultimately, not is, but me. we could achieve that sense of the I-ness of every other human being, it's already a big step. Now, There is a bridge, we know, a bridge of light. If we gather energies up from the rest of the personality, the lower part, into a field of retained energies around the mental unit, 
That would be the first imaginative step. And then the energies of the soul are needed too to be gathered into this ring pass knot. So we can imagine the qualities of the open and opening petals of the egoic lotus being drawn into that field of retained energies around the mental unit. Because each of these petals is really an energy center. So our inhalation draws them into the pool of energies. And even from the jewel in the lotus. which is the monad in extension on the higher mental plane. And there is this feeling of a connection between the intuitive level and the astral level and a multicolored rainbow bridge, all the colors, all the colors. But perhaps two colors are especially prominent of our uh, soul ray and our personality ray, however you wish to visualize them. You know, ultimately, there's that alignment that reaches all the way from the base of the spine up to the monad, even. So that's all part of the Antikarana, Kundalini Antikarana, and covering this space, as it were, that needs added communication between the mental unit and the monastic permanent atom is our imagined bridge of light. So repeat to yourself the name of your soul ray and the name of your personality ray, or if you don't know, just use the second ray, the ray of love wisdom. And we're going to imagine that from this intense pool of retained energies, through which the bridge passes, and then away from which it originates in projection, 
we're going to especially use the indigo color of love wisdom and its word of power. I see the greatest light. And as we use this indigo light and the white light that shoots across the chasm, we can see it linking the monastic permanent atom and the mental unit and ultimately other aspects of the spiritual triad all the way to what we really are, the spirit, the being, the monad. So we'll sound the Om outwardly on a second ray note. And inwardly we say to ourselves, I see the greatest light. Oh. 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 So the greatest light for us right now is the light of Shambhala. The light of the monad is called unfettered enlightenment. And it reveals eventually all, all knowledge within our planetary ring pass knot. See the greatest light. And this takes us imaginatively at least not only into transpersonal places but into the great impersonal places that are more part of the planetary logos than they are anything that has to do with what we've been doing in the lower three worlds and then our brotherhood with the masters is intensified as we will to serve the plan that they serve. We are younger brothers, younger sisters, we're there and we serve. And we salute them somehow expressing our solidarity with these great beings who are bringing the divine plan and the purpose behind it into manifestation. And in doing this, we are pledging ourselves. And we all have to become pledged disciples. We can't be an accepted disciple unless we are a pledged disciple. So our salutations are our pledge. And so we salute the great beings, beginning with the Christ to whom we offer the, the gratitude of our heart and soul. If we could but realize it's hard. He's a seventh degree initiate becoming the mind as it is in Christ. It's hard for us to know this, but even if we begin to know it a little bit, it's an astonishing energy. So, our first salutations to the head of the hierarchy, the Christ, the master of all masters. Oh. 
Salutations to the Christ, the Master of all Masters. Salutations to the Triangle of Masters with whom we most closely work. Master Moria, Master Kifumi, Master Chuaku. Salutations to the Master Moria, the head of all esoteric organizations and schools. Salutations to the Master Kutumi, whose ashram is the most responsible for preparing for the reappearance of the Christ, the coming Christ of the age of Capricorn. He is. Salutations to the Master Joal Kool, who has given us the Blue Books and much of the Secret Doctrine, and is training aspirants for initiation, one of the externalizing masters, and our great uh, friend and protector. Salutations to your own master as you know him to be or conceive him to be. Salutations to the entire spiritual hierarchy of our planet, the great ashram of Sanat Kumara. And our thought imaginatively rises to the center where the will of God is known. The 
the great center of will and purpose on our planet, presided over in the council chamber by Sanat Kumara at the center. So in all reverence and in all humility and identified as a group soul, we imaginatively approach receptivity. That's all we can have at this point, some receptivity to the great energy of will and purpose emanating from Shambhala. May the purpose of the Great One, caring as he does the will of the Solar Logos, may his purpose and his will animate our life. And may we find a way to embody this in form. Now, we want to go to the very center of that indigo disk, that indigo sun, there to meet the consciousness of Master DK, at least imaginatively, and to become outposts as much as we can uh, of his consciousness. And the way we do this, we all gather to a point, imaginatively, of light, love, and power. We are together in light, love, and power. And we, as it were, hover above the golden pathway, symbolically leading into the heart of the indigo sun, where we can imaginatively expect to meet the consciousness of Master Decay. And so as the golden pathway shortens on its way to being absorbed into the indigo disk, we imaginatively ride with it until we are within the indigo disk and the golden pathway is absorbed. And here we imagine, let us say, that on our imaginative journey into the solar system, where we receive the energies available, constellationally, solarly, planetarily, etc., we are guided by the understanding of Master Decay.
and we affirm that somehow we are increasingly outposts for his understanding, for his consciousness. So relatively perfect regarding the rays and astrology and uh, the creative hierarchies. And our trip in consciousness will take us basically to the moon, veiling Vulcan, Neptune or Uranus in the charts of all of us, the more mentally polarized. The veil concerns Uranus, but in certain signs, Vulcan or Neptune is powerfully present. But the moon is representing the prison house of the soul, the prison of the soul. And we have to know the ways we are imprisoned because we are all in prison. As long as we have a causal body, we are relatively in prison. And as long as we have any identification as the personality, we are in prison. The moon represents the lunar lords, the lunar vehicles. But we're also going to travel to the place of reception for the rays of Neptune. And we open there to the purifying astral nature and eventually to the influences of love, compassion, and identification. And what we find one day on the cosmic astral plane via Neptune, we don't know. But Neptune will lead us onward, off our identification with the cosmic physical plane. So let us begin by pondering on the power of the moon mother of the form in relation to cancer it's the the lunar vehicles that are in the state hopefully for for all of us <clears throat> of purification hopefully <sighs> what is the condition of our lunar vehicles and are they refined enough to let through the influences of Vulcan, Neptune, and Uranus? We really have to purify them and render them at first translucent, allowing light to come through, and then transparent. Well, this is finally achieved when the moon is in Aquarius for the one who is preparing or transfiguration, that we have to begin. And so we think about and we resolve to, all of us, purify the lunar nature, 
our own individual lunar nature and and that of the group, the groups, wherein is this purification needed most? And if I might say, you know, the factor of the lower mind with its criticism, the factor of the astral body with its self-pity, the factors of the physical body which resist through inertia, there are many things to be taken care of. So we try to imagine that the lunar vehicles are improving in their purity. We sound an ohm as if the three hidden planets can in fact have freer passage through our lunar vehicles. Oh. Because unless we clear them up, we can't really live the spiritual life which calls to us. Now, you know, you've seen that beautiful blue planet, Neptune. It's the bluest of the planets telling about its, I think, sixth ray soul and second ray monad. At first, you know, it has a lot to do with the astral body, the ocean, which must be calmed and reflect the light of the sun without fragmenting it, making, especially at the second initiation beginning there, the astral body receptive to love and compassion emanating from the buddhic plane. We can imagine the presence of Neptune, the rays of Neptune entering the astral body. Individually and of the group, our whole group process would be much different if we really all had passed the second degree and the astral body were more open to love and to wisdom. So we will imagine the beautiful rays of blue Neptune entering individually the astral body and the astral body of the groups with which we are associated, bringing calmness, love, compassion, intuition, the ability to be in alignment with the higher centers, heart, heart in the head, and so forth. So let that Neptunian energy flow in. We imagine it doing so. Oh. 
So we can reflect the sun, the inner suns, the sun of the soul, the sun of the monad, and uh, an ascending series of higher sun sources. But there's more to Neptune. It's transcendental, really, you know, from the hierarchical perspective. It's the planet of the presence, the presence, the presence of God, the presence of being the all-pervading presence which knows no boundaries and it can promote identification with the heart of life within the form Christ energy Buddhic energy even monadic energy the salvation, transcendental power of salvation open to the initiate beyond the third degree and realized at the fourth degree, the sixth degree, maybe the seventh and ninth degrees. helping us know that indeed the whole is seen as one. The whole is seen as one. So let's imagine our group, it is a group phenomenon at this point, open to the inflow of the transcendental power of Neptune, the hierarchical ruler, Eliminating all these artificial boundaries caused by the illusion-producing lower mind. And flowing in and bringing the oneness, the boundarylessness, the sameness, the beingness. It's a high state, monadic in its nature. Let's imagine that flowing into our group lives. There is a calmness, there is a silence in which the realization of the higher unitive and homogeneous planes can be realized if we care enough to practice this type of reflection. It's the energy of salvation and the solar flames, we are told, are stored in Neptune, the flames of the 
heart of the sun, and the heart of the sun is the, it's many things, but it's also the soul of our solar logos, the blue logos and blue Neptune. So let's realize somehow that we live in this solar system of the great blue logos with his second ray soul, second ray personality, and probably even ultimately a second ray monad. After the fourth ray is uh, lifted. So we're in that. We're units of love. We're units of love wisdom. And it expresses throughout the solar system, regardless of what ray or rays we may have secondarily. Affirm to yourself that you are a unit of love wisdom. And we'll use again a second ray note, the G, the blue note. Now imaginatively we leave our solar system, we look towards the rather faint, faint constellation Cancer, it was so prominent for us in the previous solar system, especially the first part of that system. And now it is less radiant. It's surrounded by the radiance of Leo and Gemini, much more powerful in relation to this solar system, but it is substantial. It's the dark light of matter. It is underlying our solar system. It's called the light within the form. Science is just coming to this, and there'll be so much to discover about the hidden aspects of light. The universe is in itself condensed light. Now we have to awaken the light potential of all the atoms within our vehicles. Until we are truly radiant. It awaits the stimulation coming from soul light. And it's our responsibility to bring in the light of the soul and eventually the light of the monad, unfettered enlightenment, intensifying the light. Building the Antikorana will help, of course and contacting the spiritual triad in meditation, and eventually true initiation and the monad. And we will be really light beings. So we open ourselves to the energy, quality, the feel. That's an important word for cancer, the feel of the energy quality of cancer. It's related very much to the third ray of creative intelligence, the seventh ray of magic and order. It's all about manifestation, the ashram and manifestation, the anchor.
maybe this month we can really anchor something, you know, using the energies. All the planets involved, Moon, Vulcan, Neptune, Uranus, the rays of these planets. We're coming into touch with that constellation and its sign through which its energy is expressed to the Earth and the other planets and in the solar system. And now we will in silence we will work with the energy emanating from the constellation which helps us however we may conceive it in our life build a lighted house and therein dwell so we think about that Meditate on that and apply it to our incarnated lives. I build a lighted house and therein dwell.
Now, we are all in the process of building lighted houses, whether literally on the physical plane or in terms of our vehicles, orically, in this seventh ray age coming upon us, the highest and the lowest must meet, and the light and love and power of the higher planes have to come into vehicles which will support their radiation in the lower worlds. You know, we have another <clears throat> day or so as we lead up to the Cancer full moon in the uh, GMT morning, 4.52.52, and we'll begin working at 3.30, you know, with the comprehensive broadcast link. So hold this very much in your mind and see how you are receiving the light and how your vehicles are affected by the light and how they are spiritualized by the light. That's what you want to do. Bring in the light, anchor it. Express it through form. I build a lighted house and therein dwell. All of this work, if we could but understand it, is taking place within the boundaries of the one about whom naught may be said. This little triangle here, with many others, and all of our great constellations, etc., are found within the periphery of this being, one about whom not may be said, our local supercosmic logos. And our zodiac uh, is the heart within the head center of this great being. Every sign of the zodiac is one of the 12 petals, and through the sign Cancer, this energy passes. It has <clears throat> a lot to do within our local cosmic logos, in which our Sun is a heart center, our solar system. If we could find that particular solar system that was the base of the spine in this great being, this Cancerian energy with its strong seventh ray would animate, contribute its energy to that seventh solar system. But we're interested in it entering our local cosmic logos and our solar system and traveling especially to Neptune. <clears throat> yes, uh, Vulcan is involved and Uranus is involved, but from the blue logos to the blue planet Neptune. And from Neptune very much to Shambhala and our Earth, affecting ourselves as monads. and affecting ourselves as souls through hierarchy, 
that Cancerian Neptunian vibration, bringing wholeness and identification and the ability to embrace the wholeness of which we are a part. And finally, down into our personality all together. We have a direct connection. It will involve the solar plexus center. It will also involve the sacral center. It will involve the throat center, according to its rays. So for a few days, we have an intensification of the Cancerian energy of wholeness of integration. And no matter what else we may be doing, and you know, we don't necessarily, we can't all stop our daily work, let's say, but we keep it in mind. Keep our receptivity in mind, our sensitivity, and try to feel the wholeness, the increasing integration of the groups of which we are a part, whether these groups are local, community, national, continental, or having to do with the entire human race and the globe. All of this has to become the lighted house. And so we'll think about the world and where the Cancerian energy of integration and wholeness can be used. And as we sound the great invocation together, we will see that energy um, directed towards those places which really have to overcome fragmentation and experience something of the wholeness which is gradually growing. So light, love, and power, the basics of the divine plan can descend through humanity in the various kingdoms of nature and the globes and chains and schemes and we are part of this wholeness we are not just individuals we are representatives of the whole and if the truth be known we are that wholeness and increasingly under the cancerian energy of identification we will realize that to be the case so together then the great invocation from the point of light within the mind of god let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love, within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center 
where the will of God is known, <clears throat> let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. <laughs> From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth oh. Oh. Thank you, everyone, for meditating in this pre-full moon and uh, our actual exact uh, moment full moon broadcast on the early morning, for some of you very early, but for those in the United States a little easier and not too bad in Australia and New Zealand, um, starts at uh, 3.30 a.m. GMT and the full moon at 4.52.52. .52. GMT, so, okay, hold the mantra in your mind, uh, keep the determination to see and be the wholeness as we move towards the exact uh, moment of the full moon, and we'll be putting this up, uh, I think, on uh, YouTube quite soon. And uh, we'll be getting our stride on Makara before long. We've had some changes. and uh, But there's lots available for you for your study. So just have the determination to absorb and apply as much of the great teaching of Master DK in the hierarchy as you can during these next seven years. And it will make a big difference okay lots of love to everybody and uh, we'll see you at the moment uh, of the full moon and maybe a little bit before you know <laughs> i suspect because we have to do that this is the link to join here you can find it in the uh, chat box the comprehensive broadcast link okay Thank you, and we'll be getting things posted as soon as we can. All the best, and bye-bye.